Welcome everyone. I am Mike Vulcan, lead instructor of Freelancer Masterclass and host of the very popular Freelancer School. I'm very humbled by uh, all the attention it's been getting lately and all the great comments and the stats are just skyrocketing upwards in um, hockey stick fashion in, uh, in views and listens. So um, I'm very humbled by that. Thank you for listening. Um, this topic is on the top three ways to find freelance clients during the holiday season. It is the holiday season now. We're in the fourth quarter. If you're listening to this live or almost live, and um, we've got a common problem that a lot of freelancers and consultants have during this time of year is that their clients are uh, very slow to respond to emails and um, their prospecting is uh, very hard to do because uh, many people don't respond to proposals and um, and because a lot of their potential clients are on vacation or or have one foot out the door um, you know, of work. So let's talk about the top three ways to find freelance clients during the holiday season. The first thing I would recommend is to touch base with past clients. Now, even if you've been an experienced freelancer or don't have any freelance uh, to work at all, if you only have a few past clients, this doesn't have to be a big project. You don't have to over-engineer this, okay? All you have to do is take your, your best clients that you know uh, ended well, the relationships ended well, there's always a potential for future work, you'd like to work with them in the future, and you simply send them an email, ask them how they've been, okay? You can ask them their plans for the upcoming year, you can ask them their, if they met their goals for last year. Uh, for example, uh, I had a client I just followed up with because I did a, uh, I worked with one of their web designers and did a whole website revamp for them, it, it changed their entire company. And when I was done with that project, I kind of left them and I went on to other other clients, other projects. That was about six months ago. I then followed up with him a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago. And uh, he now told me, well, the website's doubled in traffic. We have more organic uh, hits coming in from search engine optimizations than, uh, you know, because of our, your search engine optimization work than ever before. We're up about 250% in traffic since the website launch. Okay, great. You know what? That's a big win. And it just showed that I followed up with him. He cared. It showed him that I cared about what he was uh, what he was doing and how he was doing and how his company was doing. So he very much appreciated that. And now I have another project on my plate he gave me because um, I followed up with him. Um, now, I wasn't expecting work. I was just generally curious on how his website and just the holiday season and, and getting touched in touch with past clients made me think of, oh, I wonder how that website revamp is doing. Okay, you can do the same thing. Um, simply send them a note with no selling or preconditions. Uh, that just makes you top of mind to them, okay? Um, you can ask them questions specific to their business or specific to their personal life. Um, another thing, another way to get freelance clients during the holiday season is you've got to give to receive. So give them something of value. You know, I hire a lot of freelancers and every year I get a slew of, even though I don't drink coffee, I get a slew of coffee cards in the mail, which are nice. You know, I give them to my wife. They're still nice. Um, I last year got a nice uh, Harry and David's uh, Asian pear collection. My God, it was the most delicious fruit I ever ate. I got Sherry's berries. I get boxes of chocolates. I get all sorts of stuff, right? Um, past freelancers are want to stay top of mind with me because I treat them right. I give them work. Why not send them a few dollars here and there to show them your appreciation? I'm not suggesting you do that. I don't do that personally unless clients have given me um, a lot of work. You know, I'm talking about 30,000 plus for the year. So um, you can mail them a simple card. Uh, you can give them suggestions to improve their latest blog post title. If you're a writer, you know, freelance writers make up the largest contingent of freelancers. And if you're a writer looking to drum up business, and let's say you've written a blog post or a few blog posts and titles for a previous client. Just go back to them and say, hey, listen, I was looking at your blog a few days ago and I noticed uh, you've got uh, a few new blog posts that could use some optimization. Remember these uh, SEO keywords you told me we needed to go after? Well, uh, it turns out they're not in your title. So I suggest changing your last couple titles to this, this, and this. All right. You know, that shows them that you cared. You put some thought into it. And hey, that's right. I remember you. Uh, we've got a big push in content marketing coming up. Do you want to help? You know, it's that easy. It happens all the time. And if you're a freelance marketer, one of the things you can do, give them a free website review saying, hey, I noticed since we last touched base, you made these changes to your homepage. I suggest doing this, this and this to improve um, your marketing or, or inbound traffic or conversions or whatever it may be. All right. So you can give them website review. You can improve their latest blog post title, improve anything based on 
what you do as a freelancer, you can help them just by reaching out and sending a quick comment. Again, being top of mind. And the third thing I recommend is to connect with other freelancers and strategic partners. Two different things here. Sometimes there's a gray area there, but let me explain. When you're talking to freelancers, those are people who don't necessarily do what you do. So I'm a marketer. I work with graphic designers. I work with writers. I work with other marketers like SEO professionals. You know, I'm a strategist, so I won't do SEO usually. Um, I'll work with other freelancers and the same client, but they're not taking dollars from me. They're not my competitors. Now, a strategic partner might be a whole other company. So let's say I often refer clients to a particular software system or a SaaS company, right? I'll reach out to the owner of that company saying, hey, listen, it's a successful year for me. I drove 20 people to your to your company or maybe two. Um, you know, let's talk about how we can work together more in the future. Um, you can ask them, did you meet your goals for this prior year or this year we're in right now, or what are your goals for this upcoming year? Um, and then you could talk about ideas to partner together for the upcoming years. You know what? And always come to the table with ideas. Say something like, you know what? This is what I'm thinking our working relationship should be um, so we can both benefit. In science, it's called a symbiotic relationship uh, when both parties benefit, when both people uh, benefit. And I have freelancer partnership contracts in freelancermasterclass.com. So if you haven't taken the course, go ahead and register. You get all that great stuff. Um, but anyway, freelancers and strategic partners are a great way to get clients uh, during the holiday season. They're available, they're working. All right. So hopefully you can take either one of these three items I just mentioned, or all three of them, and drum up some really great business for the end of this year and for the upcoming year. Okay. Good luck.